Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today I just wanted to do a real quick video. Um, I came across a mod, the Leaf Spring Shroud. And basically, the short of it is that people are cutting out pieces of film and stuffing it up inside of the upper housing right above where the, um, the leaf spring is for your switch in order to take away the spring ping or the I'm sorry the leaf ping that occurs on some tactile switches now yes lubing a tactile switch especially with its legs is going to lose a lot of that tactility because instead of that bump it's just going to slide right on through but having to cut up a film for every switch as well as using a film um, not only is it costly, but it's going to be time consuming. I have tried many different ways of lubing switches, but there is one thing that I do that eliminates a spring ping, whether it be a linear or whether it be a tactile. And it's the same thing that I do. Now, there's two types of ping that can occur from a switch. You can have spring ping, which is the most common, especially with cheaper, non pre-lubricated uh, switches. The spring is usually made of a cheaper steel. It's not plated and thus when pressed and released it's going to reverberate causing that familiar metallic um, But other switches also can have leaf spring pain. Um, now the leaf spring it is a spring but it's basically just one piece of metal folded over that gets pressed together for that momentary action because all of our well MX switches are momentary switches so I just wanted to just real quick show what I do to eliminate spring ping and leaf spring ping without having to cut up films I have found that lubing the majority of the switch for most instances is pretty unnecessary as well now, I do know that some people enjoy doing it. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I actually, even the way I do it, does take up some time, and I enjoy doing it. It's something that almost makes me calm, but I'm not going to waste more time doing it in a way that's going to take more time when, when it's not necessary. So this is an Otemu Brown. Now, I probably should have see how much this can get picked up here. This has both spring ping and leaf ping. I gotta believe some of that's getting picked up by the microphone. So, what we have is this spring reverberating or shaking and creating that high pitched ping. But we also have the leaf spring, which is the copper part right there, when it bounces, when the, the leg of the uh, stem comes down and bounces basically this leaf spring it's also reverberating and um, vibrating ever so slightly but it creates that ding noise that we are familiar with now some people prefer to use the brush that's fine you can do it using the brush I do not lube stems anymore or housings for that matter because most switches I have found that after a week or two of use, if they were scratchy when I first got them, they're not after that. I've had a few, like kale creams, that they will still remain scratchy. I prefer to use a switch breaking machine to make them smooth. But most switches, after a little use, that they will basically wear away any extra um, or dimples they might have there, and they're gonna become smooth after time. So, in my opinion, there's no need to lubricate um, the stem or the housing. But when it comes to the spring, which is what I do for most of my switches, I just dip it in. Now this is a mix of Molly Coat and PAO oil sent to me by a friend. It is extremely similar to your Crytox. Um, I don't use Crytox. I mean, I have some. 
um, or tribosis because it's it's extreme overkill in my opinion it's meant for temperatures and pressures that we're just never going to see inside of a keyboard so i don't feel the need to spend that much money uh, for it i use either super lube which can be bought for five six bucks off of amazon i use an 80 20 mix um, which is 80 percent grease 20 percent oil and i just heat it up and it's a black baggy like curveball does and then just put it in into one of those dispenser bottles but this is a very similar to your crytox, your tribosis. Um, I dip the spring in there. If there's any extra, what, one thing to make sure of, and Alex just uh, said, you know, and he's got a point, if you donut dip and you don't clean it afterwards, that extra oil that's there, it's going to get inside of the hole at the bottom of your housing. And that's gonna create a very unpleasant sound. So. What I like to do is dip it. If there's a little bit more, I just blow it off. But as you can see, I actually got a little bit more grease on there than I'd like, but it's not gonna cause any issues. And I put that back in. Now, because we know that this also has leaf spring ping, I'm gonna dip my brush and I'm gonna make on the back of the leaf spring, not on the front. If you did it on the front, then you're, you'll be affecting tactility. Do it on the back of the leaf spring and all I do is just one stroke. That's it. Doesn't matter if it's too dark or too light. As long as you know that there's grease on there, then that's all that's needed. I like to follow the advice uh, Gazoo gives in that when you're before you close it, uh, especially a tactile, but I do this with all switches. I press down, make sure it's in the rail, and make sure that it's below the leaf spring, the leg to the switch, and then I go ahead and close it. Now both the spring ping and the leaf spring ping, or leaf ping, is gone. And not a bad brown. All right, so, and here we've got another one that has a bit of both. Um, this is the uh, Aco Blue Cream, Cream Blue, I believe. It's a, it's a light tactile. Some have a little bit more ping than others. how much of that comes through let's go ahead and open it up and I'll show you how I do it with the um, with my dispenser bottle which uh, these can be find on Aliexpress and Amazon uh, usually in packs 10 or more um, and they're fairly cheap so when I'm doing it this way I instead of donut dipping I basically just make a little bit of grease oil on the outside of the spring very lightly there. Uh, the same applies to want to put it in the middle so it doesn't get in that little hole and make for an unpleasant sound. And then to get rid of the leaf spring ping, just a little dab on the back of it because that way it's not going to affect any of the tactility. Close, push the stem down, and then push the housing to close. That actually, I don't know if you guys could tell between stock and this, actually made it a little bit deeper. I think it makes most switches sound better, even if there is no ping. Again, lubing it any more than this, in my opinion, I mean, if you'd like, you enjoy it, go for it. I just think it's unnecessary. And because I've got limited time here, just like we all do, <laughs> I like to spend my time as wisely as possible so to me this is this is all that's needed for any any switch really that doesn't come pre uh, because like I said it will help and it'll make it sound that much better so here's a, a stock one definitely the microphone doesn't necessarily pick up all those high pitches but doing it with the brush method. All right, get out of there. First, I'm gonna dip the spring. And see, there we got just enough. Make sure none gets on the stem on the inside of the column. And then turn this around. A tiny amount of grease, the lube. 
just a streak. And there you go. Close this back up. Press down on the stem. And close the housing. And that's it. So, um, I just wanted to do this video. Like I said, I saw uh, how many views that uh, Leaf Shroud uh, mod had. And I'm just like, why would somebody go through and not only waste an entire set of films and use them in an unnecessary way, but I also thought, what if that piece of film gets loose? It could definitely affect the actuation um, or the spring ping or the leaf spring working properly. So, like I said, I don't ever intend to tell people this is the only way to do things. This is how I do things, and it works for me. It saves me a lot of time, and I get to play with a lot more switches. And the switches, in my opinion, perform to their best when they're looped. Or, or at least, like I said, like I do. Take care of the leaf and take care of the spring. But that's just a, just a little tip from your Uncle Mark. Anyway, I hope that this helps anybody, especially if you're getting into it. I mean, a lot of people are going to say there's, a, you know, on, there's the only one way to move a switch. And I encourage people to explore and find out if that works for you or not. There are many different ways to do this. This is the way that I choose to do it, and it works for me. Hopefully, it works for you too. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.